Many people get a home battery to go with their solar installation. But what if you can't have or don't want solar? Does having a home battery on its own make any sense? Let's find out. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that having solar panels on your house is a great way of lowering your carbon footprint, helping the planet and saving a lot of money on your energy bills all at the same time. I even made a video recently with 10 compelling reasons on why you should think about going solar this year. And adding a home battery to your solar installation amplifies all of those benefits. But of course not everyone is in a position to have solar. Perhaps your roof isn't quite right for solar panels, or you live in a conservation area where such installations are restricted. It might feel as though the door to sustainable living is closed to you, but actually it's not. If you install a home battery in your home and nothing else, you'll still reap many of the benefits that a solar and battery installation would provide. Before we dive into the topic then, let's look at what a home battery is and how it operates. Normally, all your home appliances are powered directly from the grid. But if we install a home battery, we can charge that battery from the grid and then later discharge that battery so that it supplies power to the home instead of the grid. Actually, the grid is not disconnected. It's still there to supply any power above what the battery is able to supply. Let's say the home requirement was seven kilowatts at that moment, and the battery has a maximum power output of five kilowatts. Then the grid would supply the remaining two kilowatts. Now, of course, the battery only has a finite capacity, and depending on the power requirement of the home, it will run out of charge sooner or later. And when it does, the grid will step back in to supply the total home power requirement again. Now, given that all we're doing with the battery is storing energy from the grid and passing that same energy onto the home at some point later, you might be asking, why have a battery at all? Well, actually, there's quite a number of benefits to having a home battery. Let's have a look at these now. But before we do, can you help me out by clicking like on this video? It'll only take you a few seconds, but the positive effect it'll have on my channel is huge. Thank you. We can split the benefits of having a home battery into three groups, financial benefits, environmental benefits, and energy stability. Let's start with the financial benefits. And here are the four main ones, starting with cheap import. Most people are on an energy tariff where the price per kilowatt hour of electricity is the same no matter what time of day it is used. For example, with this tariff, that price is just under 30 pence every hour of the day. But if you have a smart meter installed at your property, your energy company is able to provide you with what are called time of use tariffs, where the price per kilowatt hour changes throughout the day. Here's an example tariff from Octopus Energy in the UK called Octopus Flux. The price is normally just under 29 pence, but there is an off-peak period for three hours in the early morning, where the price drops down to just over 17 pence. And later in the day, there is a peak period where the price increases to just over 40 pence. This kind of tariff brings about the first financial benefit of having a home battery. If you set your battery to automatically charge itself during that off-peak period every morning, then you can use that cheap energy to power your home for the rest of the day, including during that peak period so you can avoid the higher price then. That's a saving of 11.5 pence per kilowatt hour, or 39% of what you would have paid otherwise. If you think that sounds good, here's another example tariff, again from Octopus Energy in the UK. This one's called Octopus Go. The price of this tariff is normally just under 30 pence, but there is an off-peak period for four hours in the early morning, where the price drops down to nine pence. Again, if you set your battery to automatically charge during that off-peak period every morning, you can use the cheap energy to power your home for the rest of the day. But the saving here is even better, almost 21 pence per kilowatt hour, or a whopping 66% of what you would have paid. And if you're feeling more adventurous, there are energy tariffs that track the wholesale price of electricity in your country. A good example of this kind of tariff is one called Agile, again from my favorite energy company. As you can see, the price of electricity per kilowatt hour is constantly changing every 30 minutes. What's interesting about this tariff though, is that in addition to prices generally being cheaper overnight, if you have a lot of renewable energy generation in your country and the weather is right, wholesale prices can drop dramatically sometimes even going negative, meaning that you're able to charge your battery and get paid for it at the same time. This is just the nature of renewables like wind and solar. 
They're not predictable, and so those who have the right capability, i.e. a home battery, can capitalize financially on when the grid has too much renewable energy and will pay you to take it. I can see this becoming more and more common as the share of renewables in your country's energy mix increases over the next few years. By the way, if you're living in the UK and you're looking for a great energy provider, I can thoroughly recommend Octopus Energy, who I've been with myself for two years now. Sign up with my referral code here and we'll both get £50. It's a really easy way for you to help me keep this channel going. And thank you to all of you who've used my code already. I really appreciate it. OK, let's talk about the second financial benefit now, paid export. This is where you get paid for exporting energy from your battery to the grid. It's not available in every country yet, but many tariffs also come with a paid export feature. This allows you to buy energy when it's cheap, for example during the off-peak period, and then sell that same energy back to the grid for a profit later in the day. A price arbitrage, if you like. It's worth noting though that even if you're on a tariff with paid export, your energy company may not accept it if it's not coming from a renewable generation source like solar panels or a wind turbine. So check the terms and conditions of the tariff carefully before you sign up. OK, on to the third financial benefit then, demand flexibility schemes. There are now schemes available in many countries where you're invited to export your home battery during particular times when your national grid is under stress. These are called demand flexibility schemes and some of them pay up to 15 times the standard import price. I'll not cover the detail on those schemes here, but I recently made a video on them and you can access that here. The fourth financial benefit is virtual power plants. In many countries around the world, large power plants are being constructed using hundreds and thousands of batteries. These plants are able to store energy from the grid and then return it back to the grid on demand in order to keep it balanced amongst many other reasons. And for this, the owners of those battery plants are paid for their services by the grid operator. But now you can play a part in this kind of thing with your own home battery. Depending on the manufacturer of the battery and or your energy supplier, all or part of your home battery capacity can be delegated to become a virtual power plant comprising thousands of home batteries across the country. And the revenues you could derive from this could be even higher than the paid export and demand flexibility schemes put together. OK, let's now have a look at the environmental benefits of owning a home battery. And this is a good place to start. It's a chart of the daily energy demand for a typical country. And as you can see here, demand is generally lower throughout the night, and there is a peak demand in the early evening. Let's start by looking at the mix of energy sources required to meet that demand in the evening. If your country has nuclear, this is the first item in the stack. Nuclear power stations are basically on all the time and they supply a continuous level of power for decades. Next up, your country might have hydroelectric power stations, where rainwater is collected at high altitude and used to drive power generating turbines. Then, your country may have interconnectors. These allow the transfer of energy between countries and can be used to import energy when required to meet peak demand. On top of that, we have wind and solar generation, which will vary, of course, depending on the weather conditions. So far, these energy resources are relatively cheap, but as you can see, they're not enough to meet the level of peak demand that we have at the moment. So we now need to turn to fossil fuels, in this example, gas. And we can adjust the level of generation from burning gas so that it exactly meets demand. And if peak demand is forecast to be higher, we could simply burn more gas to meet it. But there comes a point where the gas plants reach their maximum capacity. And so some countries will fire up coal power stations as well, and that gets really expensive. OK, let's go back to the normal level of peak demand and turn our attention to the demand overnight. If we layer on our supply mix at that time, it's clear in this example we don't need to be burning fossil fuels. So already we can see that energy is cheaper and cleaner. There of course isn't any solar at this time, but we want to make full use of wind. So let's shut off the interconnectors and also stop the hydroelectric power stations. That's certainly reduced supply, but we still have too much. We don't really want to have to curtail wind generation because that in itself is expensive. So let's provide incentives for people to use energy at that time, thereby increasing demand. Providing lucrative smart tariffs to encourage people to charge their EV batteries, of course, is a great way of doing that. 
and similar tariffs are available to home battery owners, allowing them to charge their batteries at the same time. And all of this hopefully raises demand to match the available supply. And even better than that, if we go back to the evening, all of those fully charged home batteries can go on to help out during that evening peak. And that's because home battery owners are using energy from those batteries during that peak period instead of drawing it from the grid. And of course that means less fossil fuels are required to be burned at that time. If you've elected to join a virtual power plant with your battery, that also helps the grid. Virtual power plants aggregate the capacities of distributed energy resources like home batteries to provide the various services to the grid, including the following. Load shifting. This is very similar to what we just covered, but this time on a much, much larger scale. Frequency regulation. The grid needs to keep supply and demand in precise alignment every second, and failure to do so can cause frequency deviations risking power outages and damage to infrastructure. Large-scale battery plants play a crucial role in retaining this balance by quickly adjusting to any fluctuations. And finally, renewable integration. Large-scale batteries, including virtual power plants, are great for smoothing out the variability of renewable generation sources, like wind and solar. In summary, if you have a home battery, you're not only reducing your own carbon footprint, your battery is contributing to better energy management across your country, leading to a grid that is more stable, efficient and environmentally friendly. Let's now talk about the third and final benefit of owning a home battery, energy stability. I think we've all experienced power outages. They're very inconvenient to our daily lives, but in some parts of the world they can occur quite frequently, for example during stormy seasons. But if your home battery supports emergency power supply, or EPS, capability, then should the grid go down for any reason, your battery is able to electrically isolate the entire home from the grid, and then continue to supply all the home appliances as if the grid was still present. Of course, your battery only has a finite capacity, and so you would want to limit the power draw as much as you can by minimising the use of electrical appliances, especially heavy appliances. And if the grid has not returned by the time your battery becomes fully discharged, you'll lose power at that point. So having a battery with a large capacity is prudent, perhaps one that could cover your energy requirement for the entire day, just to be safe. Remember though, not all batteries have EPS capability, but it is becoming more and more common in the latest models, given the many benefits of having power during grid outages. The benefits of having a home battery are clear lower energy bills, helping the environment, and securing the energy supply to your home. And what I really like about the technology is that just about anyone in the world can derive these benefits. Home batteries are relatively easy to install to any property that is connected to the grid. There is one major consideration though, and that's the upfront cost. Home batteries today are still an expensive purchase, and it may take a few years to recover that outlay through the savings you make. I guess the decision to buy one will depend on which of the benefits we discussed are the most important to you. If it's mainly for the environmental benefits or energy stability, then it's a fairly easy decision to make. And even if you're halfway between the environmental and financial benefits, I'd argue it's still a straightforward decision. However, if you're buying a home battery purely for financial reasons, unless you've got or are getting a solar installation to go with it, it might be a little too early to be considering a battery-only solution. It won't be long though before battery prices come down sufficiently to make the payback work. I made this video recently explaining how and why battery prices are falling, and that video includes a forecast on future price falls until 2030. But even in the last couple of weeks, that forecast looks to be too conservative. CATL, the world's biggest battery storage manufacturer, is set to reduce the cost per kilowatt hour of its LFP cells, which are commonly used in home batteries, by a stunning 50% over the next six months. If you're interested in getting a home battery and would like to work out the financial benefit you'll get from it, particularly how long it will take before you break even on your investment, I've developed a utility that will do all of the hard work for you. All you have to do is enter a few pertinent items of information and it will show you the break-even point, taking into account many factors including inflation. You can try out the utility yourself by signing up to my Patreon here. I would love to continue providing these utilities for free, but they're a lot of work. And so by signing up to my Patreon, you're not only supporting me to develop more and more utilities over time, you're helping me in my overall mission 
which is simply to provide everyone with a deeper understanding of solar and related technologies so that we can all make a difference in the world. I've tried to make it as inexpensive as possible and a huge thank you to all of you who have already signed up. Check out the videos coming up on the screen shortly to help choose the right battery for you and here's a sneak preview of what I'll be talking about in my next video. If there's ever a battery specification that fits the bill for a battery that might be seen in tens of millions of homes around the world, it's this one, the Tesla Powerwall 3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.